Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Long time no see, so let's go straight to the point. In this video, I am going to show you how you can download, install, and set up everything related to a database. And we are going to write our first SQL queries together. So uh, the database that we are going to use is called Interbase. I'm going to leave a link to download it in the description. So after you click that link, you are going to get a page like this one. So there are two versions of Interbase, Interbase 2020 Server and then Interbase 2020 To Go and IB Lite. The one that I will use in this video is 2020 Server for Windows, Linux, and Mac. If you want to read the differences, you can read that here. So click here on Start for free, and you should get um, a registration form like this one. So I'm going to fill this in. Okay, so make sure to fill all of these fields in and then also check that you are not a robot. At least I hope that you are not. Okay, and then click on start. And now we should get the download link. So download installer here, I'm going to download Windows version. Okay, and I will be back once this is downloaded. Okay, so here is downloaded zip, I'm going to extract it. And then I'll open this folder and we are going to need this install Windows application. So double click on that. And here we get pretty simple installation. It's mostly next, next, finish. So click on install. And now we are going to wait for a couple of seconds. Okay, now click on next and then accept terms and conditions. Next, next. Uh, what is this? Uh, multiple instances. Uh, no, for now. And then next. Here is the folder where it is going to store it. So next. And then here you can review what you have selected. And if everything is okay, click on install. And now we are going to wait again. <laughs> so here you should enter a number that you received in your email after you registered. So I'm going to check that and paste it here. So here is my serial number and click on register. And now it is done. Great. So after you finish the installation, you will need to run IB console. So IB console. Okay. And here you will get a message that says that you need to create a server. So you will get a wizard like this one. And if you accidentally close it, don't worry, you can open it again by right clicking here and click on add. Okay. And here click on next. And then server edition, next. And here you need to put default password for sysdba user. Uh, let me very quickly check it and I will put it on the screen. Okay, so here is the password and you can also click on this save password so that it doesn't ask again. And then click on next. You can put the description here for your server if you want and then click on finish. And with that, we have successfully created a server. Now we get an error message here, which says that Interbase server is not running. And that is why you are not able to connect to that server. If I double click on this here, we are not able to connect to the server. So what we need to do is we need to start Interbase server manager. And then here, just click on start. And after you have done this, you should be able to connect to your server. So if I double click on this again, as you can see, we get this green check mark, which means that we have successfully connected to our server. So what is the next step after you have created a server? Well, let's create a database. So right click on this part here, databases, and then click on create database. Okay. And here you will need to uh, insert a name for your database or actually select a location first and I'm going to store it into my documents folder. So let's call it my first, oh, my first DB like this and click on save. Okay, here is your user, your password. Uh, you can click on save password if you want and then click on okay. And now it's going to ask you for a password. So let's uh, input password and click on connect. Okay, and now you should see this part here, which says my first DB, and then you should see this green check mark, which means that you are connected to your database. 
So we have so far created a server, created a database. So now the time has come for me to show you how you can write your first SQL query in order to create a table, insert data into that table, and so on. Now, very quickly, SQL stands for Structured Query Language, which means that it is just like a programming language, except that it is used to communicate with databases. So it is a language that you use in order to uh, create tables, drop tables, insert data, read it, delete it, edit it, and so on. And if you want a separate course that is dedicated entirely to SQL, Give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments so I can create that course if you want. So in order to write SQL code, please select this little SQL icon, click on it, and you should get a window like this one. So here we are going to write SQL code. The first thing that I want to do is I want to create a table. So I will say create table and let's call that table users like this, and I will put these parentheses and then at the end, semicolon. Okay, and then here I'm going to specify attributes for users. So I will say that every user will have ID and that ID is going to be of type int and it will not be null like this. So that is the first attribute. And then let's also say that every user has name, and name is going to be of type string and that type in databases is called var char so i will say var char and that is going to be a variable number of characters and the maximum number of characters is going to be 30 you can put a different max limit here and then i'm also going to say that it will not be null like this and then also let's say that user will have age, it will be of type int and not null. Okay, and let's do another thing. Let's say primary key and for primary key, we are going to set ID of our user. Now this primary key part here means that every user is going to have a unique ID and that ID, which is unique, is going to be used in order to identify every single user. So there can be two users that have the same name or the same age, but there cannot be two users that have the same ID. And that is why that ID will be used as a primary key. Again, if you want a detailed course related to SQL, please let me know in the comments and I'm going to create that course. But there are a few things that I want to mention here. First is that SQL is not case sensitive, which means that you can use both uppercase and lowercase letters in order to write it. So I can say create like this, uh, but please just pick the option that you prefer and then stick to that because it makes it very hard to read if you use uppercase and then lowercase and then uppercase again and so on. So I prefer to use lowercase, but again, it's going to work either way. Okay, so that is the first thing. And then the second thing is that name for our table, I called it users. But if you try to call it user, you are going to notice that the name is bolded now. And the reason for that is that user is a keyword in SQL. So you cannot use it as a name for your table. That is why I will use users. So plural. And then as well, since this table is going to be used to store multiple users of our application, it only makes sense to name it with a plural, so users. So let's execute this query and it should create a table called users. So I'm going to select this query and click on this little uh, thunder symbol, which says execute query or press F5 on your keyboard. Okay. And now you should get this table here, but since it didn't refresh, I'm just going to close this very quickly and then open it again. Okay. And now we have users table and here are the fields of every user. So ID, name and age. So now let's add a few records. Let's insert a few records into this table. There are two ways to insert a record into a database. The first one is with user interface that Interbase provides. And the second one is by writing SQL code. I'm going to show you both, but from now on, for the most part, we are going to stick to SQL code because that is what most developers use. Like the only people that I've seen that use uh, user interface are mostly managers who don't know how to write SQL code. So 
let's do that. Um, as I said, I'm going to show you how you can insert a record with the help of user interface. So you need to go to your database and then click on tables. And here you are going to see your tables. So double click on the table that you want. And then here you need to click on data. And here you get user interface that you can use in order to insert data. So uh, let's say ID is going to be one and then name is going to be Saldina Norak. And then age is going to be 27. Okay. And then you need to click on this uh, post edit and then commit. So commit that transaction. Okay. So that is how you insert data with the help of user interface. And you can use um, these other options in order to delete or navigate through your data. That is how you use user interface. Now let's see how you can use SQL code. Where is it? Okay. It is here. So let's see if we can read this data first, how we can read the data that we just added. So I'm going to say select everything. So select all from users like this. This means select every record from users table, select this query and press F5. And here you will get the data from this table. Okay, so this is your first SQL query. Now let's see how we can insert some data with the help of SQL code. And again, if you want a detailed course, an entire course related to SQL only, let me know in the comments. Um, so how to insert data with SQL? Well, you say insert into users. So please, insert into and then specify the name of your table. And here you need to specify the fields and you have the fields here. So ID, name and age like this. Okay. And then here you will say values. So here are the values that you need to insert for these fields. So ID is going to be, let's say one again. And then for the name, since that is a string type, which is var char in SQL, you need to put these single quotation marks and inside it, you will put the name. So let's say Bill Gates like this, and then age is 50. Okay. So if I want to execute this query, I will select it and I will press F5 and we get an error. Now, what this error here says, actually, we are going to get two errors. But the first one is, it says attempted update during read only transaction. Now, let's close this. And let me show you how to fix this. So go to transactions, and then options. Okay, and here you need to set access mode to write and click OK and then click OK again. And now that error should disappear. So if I click on F5 again, this time we are getting a different error, which means that we are making progress. So now it says violation of primary or unique key constraint. Now what this error here means um, is that you are trying to add a record that has a primary key that already exists in your table. Now, if I select everything from my table, select everything from users, you will see that this ID of one already exists. So I cannot use it again. So if I change it here, if I put two instead, and I try to execute this query now, okay, now the query has been executed you need to commit that transaction. So click on transactions and commit or press F9. Okay. And if I try to read from my table again, press F5. Now you can see that we have successfully inserted a record into our table. So let's do this one more time just to repeat what we have learned. This time I'm going to say that the ID of user is three and I will say that the username is Mark Zuck, Mark Zuckerberg. Um, he is, I don't know, 35 maybe. Okay. So you say insert into and then the name of your table. 
And then inside parentheses, you specify the name of the field. So ID, name, age, and then you say values. And again, inside these parentheses, you specify the values for these fields. So ID is three, it is an integer, so we don't use quotation marks. And then this here is a name, and because this here is a var char, which means a string, you need to use single quotation marks. And then age, again, 35, an integer, so you don't need quotation marks. Okay, so I'm going to select this query, press F5, and then press F9 in order to commit this transaction, or go to transaction and press commit if you um, didn't already press F9. Okay, and now if I say select everything from users, now we are going to get our third user. So that is how you write SQL queries. So I believe that is enough for this video. For your first time working with a database, I am going to paste all the code and all the links that you need for this video in the description, or I will pin it in a comment. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can create a C++ app and connect it to the database so that you can read the data and write it, um, store it in your database. So that is going to be the next video. And then please let me know in the comment section if you want an entire course related to SQL. So if you want to learn SQL, I can create that course if you want. And um, please give this video a thumbs up if you want more videos like this one. And that also helps me and helps the YouTube algorithm in order to promote this video to other people so that they can learn programming as well. So if this video was helpful for you, make sure to share it with someone who also needs to learn this or wants to learn programming. So thank you very much for watching and I am going to see you in some other video. Bye.